Matt here, and I want to talk about the Penguin update and that sort of thing, how you can recover, things not to do, things to do, and all the good stuff. So I've got a lot of emails and messages of uh, people asking if Scrapebox, Scrapejet, and tools uh, as such are safe to use after Penguin, um, and if they can avoid Penguin and that sort of thing. Um, no tool out there, uh, that I know of anyways, uh, including Scrapebox and Scrapejet, is necessarily a problem in and of itself. Um, it's how you use it. It's kind of like the old saying that a tool is only as good as its master. So if you are using Scrapebox to do all the things that Google says not to do and to do exactly what Penguin is targeting, then yes, you're going to hurt yourself. But if you're using Scrapebox to make your link profile look natural, then Google might not even necessarily be able to see that. And that's the goal. Um, Penguin is not about the same stuff as things like Panda. For instance, Panda was about improving search results. Penguin is not. Penguin is about filtering out people that are using manipulative link profiles. It's about filtering out what Google would call web spam. So it's not about improving the search results. It's about devaluing um, bad link profiles and devaluing sites that ride solely on the back of what Google considers web spam. Now, um, there's a lot of stuff that Google didn't hit, um, and that doesn't mean that it won't get hit down the road, but um, we can look at what the results of the sites that got hit are, and we can extrapolate a good thing to do and good battle plan of attack to go after to make sure your sites don't get hit in the future. Now, honestly, uh, as I've been reading around and looking at people that didn't get hit by Penguin, they're saying, I do this, I do this, I do this, and I see the common theme. It's the same thing I do. They basically make everything look natural, which is what you should be doing anyways. The goal here is not for Google to be able to see, oh, that site right there, they're using way spammy stuff going on. It's supposed to look natural. So, for instance, one of the things that got hit really heavily by Penguin is um, intense use of exact anchor text. So if you have a site and you've only built all your incoming links, only have one anchor text, then that's pretty clear. That's not normal. That's not natural. If you ever watch somebody um, as they search or post on Facebook or do whatever, they come up with random titles. I've even seen case studies done where people will use um, crazy titles or different things and then trace all the links where people read a blog article and then link back to it. The titles are all over the map. People use everything from click here to stuff that's completely unrelated or twisted or weird. It's all about their worldview. And so the takeaway there is if you can spend some time watching some people searching Google and creating links and just using the web. I've been fortunate enough. I used to work in retail for years and years. I got to watch people, coworkers, just sit and I would be like, why are you doing that? And the bottom line is, people are random. And random is natural. All anchor text being the same and all incoming links only going to homepage, that's not normal. People are going to link with weird anchor text or somewhat relative anchor text to inner pages and home pages, and they're all over the map. So kind of think about it from that way is look natural, which is the same thing I've always said and the same thing a lot of people have always said and the people that are looking natural are the people that didn't get hurt by Penguin. So if you're going to use Scrapebox, Scrapejet, stuff like that, you've got to use it to look natural. So um, just having a quick look here at some various articles. Here's one on search engine land and let's scroll down here. Um, you can see the same theme over and over again that one of the main reasons when looking at sites hit by Penguin seems to be bad linking practices. And in this particular article they say sponsored WordPress themes for quality reciprocal linking or participating in linking networks um, such as those recently targeted. They're talking about like ALN and stuff like that. Um, if we jump over here to another article and look at that, we can scroll down through here and see stuff like paid link text using anchor text. They found that with all of their clients that got hit comment spam and so you say okay well comment spam that's you're using straight box well you know comments are bad that's not true look at it here at what it actually is talking about 
the first form is using signatures and comments using exact match anchor text. So the issue here is we're back to exact match anchor text instead of using something like your actual name that would go in there. Now I'm not saying that you should never use an anchor text again that has your keyword in it, but it has to look natural. It's not going to be uncommon to have a, some blog comment links out there that have anchor text in them rather than having um, someone's name. But it is unnatural to have all of your blog comments out there all with the same anchor text linking back to your site or whatever incoming link. So for instance, something you might do is use random names or things like click here or just the word link, stuff like that. Um, in, a, in blog comments, I would probably use more random names and then I would use other things in other kinds of links. But you get, you get the same concept here. And guest posts and questionable sites, article marketing sites, blah, blah, blah. As you, you can read through there, um, there's, there's all kinds of different things. But the premise here that we see over and over again is all the same stuff about incoming links. Incoming links to certain pages and incoming links with anchor text. So here's a nice post on SEO Moz guest post that um, is kinds of summarizes it up and makes it really simple and easy. So tip number one, get more social, leverage your fan base. That's great. Um, I've seen a lot of people say that uh, social is a big indicator um, and it, you know a normal site if you have hundreds of thousands of blog comments and every other kind of link out there is going to have some links from places like Google Plus and Facebook and Twitter and blah blah blah. So um, tip one, get more social. Tip two, link to your inner pages. Tons and tons of people would just link to their actual homepage. All the incoming links going to the homepage. That's not normal. You can have certainly a majority of your links going. I've seen people say things like 60% 60 of your incoming links going to your homepage and 40% spread out through the rest of your site. However, I have a site that has about 70% of the incoming links going to one internal URL and that URL ranks and it is the primary URL that drives the majority of the revenue. Um, and my site didn't have a problem there. But I do have all the other inner pages linked as well as the home page, and I do use dramatically diverse anchor text. So, key thing with that is don't just link your home page, link your internal pages. Diversify your anchor text. I've seen it over and over and over again. So, you can't just use, if your site's a blue widget, you shouldn't have all your anchors saying blue widgets. It should say, some of them should say blue, some of them should say widget, some of them should say link or click here, some of them might say yellow widgets, red widgets, odd widgets, small widgets, big widgets, big stuff, small stuff. Just, you know, there's a wide array of things you can do in anchor text and I'll show you how to do that here in Scrapebox in just a second but um, diversify your anchor text focus on quality not quantity and then make your content link worthy you know Penguin also targeted pages that looked spammy um, you know I don't know that a lot of people have an issue with that that I've seen necessarily um, but definitely you want to focus on quality and uh, I think these two things go together making your content link worthy you know um, if your site is content wise looks pretty bad versus content that looks pretty good you know it, it's gonna make a difference I've even seen people speculate things like if you have Google Analytics on your site and people jump over to your site and they stay on there for a while um, you know, Google Analytics knows how long people are on your pages. People that are on the page for 10 seconds and leave, and all your people are like that, that are coming from search results for a particular keyword, that's not a good sign. I'm not saying that's a major factor in Penguin. I'm just saying you have to think like that. I mean, the ultimate concept here is you want to make good content. I mean, if you don't make good content, at the end of the day, you might make some money now, but eventually something's going to catch, catch up with you because there's a good chance... Um, that some people are predicting anyways that Penguin could have future updates um, and we know that Google is constantly fighting this to try to improve their algorithm um, and try to improve their bottom line it's all about money so really I mean making good content and quality content I think is just simple but um, I think you can definitely make great links uh, utilizing tools as well and uh, not have an issue there. So let me get uh, Scrapebox up here and I'll show you how you can do some anchor text diversification here. So I've got Scrapebox up here um, and if my keyword happens to be I'm just gonna call it widgets. So my keyword is widgets. What I can do here is go to Scrape, Keyword Scraper, and type in widgets. 
go here to select sources do Google suggest you can do all of these but I'm just gonna keep this video clean and do like Google suggest and scrape so now I've got all these different widgets so let's transfer the results back to here and then let's scrape again now I've got a lot of different keywords here and then I can remove duplicate ones 20 keywords removed and then I can transfer these to the keyword list and I could keep going if I wanted to but I don't really need to because that's pretty pretty far into it add to main keyword list close down here and we can see that I just got 91 keywords and the beauty of this is if you're using Google suggest as your keyword source um, or even some of those other sources as well these are the most common search for things so if someone starts to type the word widgets in or searches for widgets these are the suggestions that Google is giving for those things so this is what Google thinks that you're probably going to be looking for and if that's the case it would expect to have anchor text around those things because it already considers them related if that makes sense so if it's already related then they're thinking okay we're gonna see anchor text around these sorts of things as well if a link profile is natural because people are naturally gonna create link anchors about how they think and what's related so just because it doesn't make sense to you doesn't mean that it's normal and natural so um, that's a great way you can do that and you can play around with that utilizing the different things in here um, if you have a more you know product centered thing you might do Amazon suggestions um, you know Google product search that sort of thing but you can mess around with that um, if you have like say three or four keywords in here throw four or five keywords in there and grab Google suggest and get you know 50 keywords throw it in there you might have 50 to 100 keywords you pull out that are good keywords um, probably worth the time to sort through and maybe hand pick out a couple that don't seem to fit the bill but by and large you can uh, use a great portion of links there and then or anchor text rather also what you can do is you don't have to evenly distribute these so you might take these random longer tail things and distribute like say 40 or 30 percent of your links in there maybe throw like 10 percent at things like click here and link and stuff like that um, or random names and then have like 50 percent of your links just your primary four or five keywords I'm not trying to give SEO advice here you're gonna to have to experiment and see but the concept is that it's got to be diversified because that's what Google's looking at it needs to be natural and it, it does seem natural that you would have you know if your sites about blue widgets that a majority of your anchor text could be blue widgets or widgets blue stuff like that or blue or widgets but it's also going to include other things in order to be natural another thing you can do is link to your inner pages now if you want to use Scrapebox to find those sorts of things you can do it like this one you can go to Google and Yahoo and Bing and AOL uh, Yahoo it doesn't work but it does with the other and do site domain.com so let's do CNN.com um, and then I start scraping and that's going to pull the inner pages from CNN.com and I had the results set to 20 there just keep this video clean you would set it to a thousand and let it pull all your inner pages and what I would do is first pull off site on your domain.com and pull as many results as you can from the different engines and then remove duplicate URLs clean it up a little bit and you've got 39 total unique URLs then I would go to add-ons and do the link extractor and in the link extractor bring in those same URLs um, whether you export them and then import them or just bring them in from Scrapebox and then extract internal links um, probably might not want to run this all up because this is your website depending on how fast your web server is you know you might be attacking your own web server so keep the connections down be patient um, and then start that out and pull internal links and as you can see it's gonna pull more internal links what I would then do is take these and export those back into Scrapebox, remove duplicates, and bring them back in. Maybe do that two or three times and just keep pulling internal links for your site. And when you're all said and done, you're probably going to have a pretty good list of internal pages there. And then you can take your very diverse list of anchor texts and spatter those across all of your internal pages 
and make things look pretty natural. So those are just a couple of examples of how you can use Scrapebox to make your life a little easier on those sort of things. But the biggest things I've seen as reading through is linking to your inner pages and diversifying your anchor text are the two big ones. Definitely can't hurt to do good quality stuff and throw in some social while you're at it. Um, keep a good link profile overall. Probably don't want to have a six month old site that has a million blog comments and absolutely no other kind of link either. You know, Scrapebox in and of itself has other options. You have the Rapid Indexer, which is kind of like a who is stat kind of site uh, that it builds links for. You can create RSS feeds and um, submit those to RSS aggregators. You can do blog comments. You can do trackbacks. All those things can be done right in Scrapebox. So you should definitely utilize at least some of all those kinds of links. And then, you know, as far as diversifying uh, anchor profile, you know, or a link profile, it's not a bad idea maybe to go and um, get some other links. Go to Fiverr or something and buy you know, spend 50 bucks and buy a bunch of different kinds of links just to make things look natural, buy some social stuff, whatever. Um, so that's kind of how you can use Penguin or use Scrapebox and that sort of thing, Scrapejet, automated tools after Penguin. And uh, that's what Penguin, Penguin targeted. And really it kind of boils down to um, you can't let Google see that you're using a manipulative link profile. You have to look natural. And natural is random.